a little bit about uh, the four causes for attaining Siddhas. Four necessary causes to achieve the goal of the practice. So what the kind of quality or the causes to attain Vajra Yogi? We talk about the swift path or easy path and all those things. We just list up all the things, easily receive blessing and all the good things. But there are at least the four causes need to be met. What's need Vajra Yogini practitioners to bring this amazing practice to fruition? Faith. Yes. Number one. I think all of you here have some kind of faith to some extent. That's why you're here. Otherwise, you don't waste like six hours or whatever hours together on weekends. So strong, unshakable, intelligent faith. Faith in what? I already kind of talked about. Faith in idam, deities, Vajrayogini, and also teachers who transmit and the teachings. I talked about those three convictions, right? Three faiths. Mm -hmm. So this unwavering faith, unshakable conviction in the belief and also in the benefit of our practice. But those things unfold, grow more and more. So don't worry about, start with a little small kindle, candlelight. Um, start from there. And also, this faith sustains us. Your practice goes up, down, up. Initially, very excited. Everything new. I don't know what uh, I'm signed up for, but I have this. But then, kind of, this sucks. <laughs> I didn't uh, mean to sign up for this. Too much. Too much commitment. Too much to do. I have other priority now. Or so, so forth. But if we have this unshakable, unwavering faith, this will save you. It's become like a continuous flow of the river, steady river flow, like a broad river leading to the ocean of awakening. I want you to your practice to be like that. <laughs> Actually, telling to myself. <laughs> Yeah, so that's number one. Faith, this is, uh, again, not blind faith. Of, of course, that trust in the guts, you know, in, inside. It's not like uh, somebody tell you this is good, so have a faith. Not like that. What else? You have to have the lineage connection. You have to be connected to the lineage, the, the stream. Yeah, connection. And, and the teacher, to, and the teacher to connect you to the lineage. Without yeah. the teacher, there's no lineage. Good. Yeah, lineage connection. In a sense that the lineage we will receive through the empowerment. Yeah, of course, empowerment is required. And uh, connection to the practice, connection to the lineage, as you said. So that means intelligent wisdom that overcomes doubt. That's uh, important. And also clear understanding of the 11 yoga of generation stage and the meditation of completion stage. So those things we will learn on this journey. The more we have the knowledge, understanding, less doubt, no? And how it works, that's kind of one of the things uh, important in the West, I feel. We need to be explained how it works. Actually, both balance is important. In the Tibetan style, yeah. Lama says something, then just do it then see how it will happen. Okay, that's also one approach. So in the West, there are so many information and some kind of confusion and the doubt. And then we are already intelligent, right? We want to know. We need to be told clear instruction, at least to some extent, not the hoodie, because hoodie means that you have to embody, you have to down through your own experience. So just get some information, clear, understand. Then you try out, trust, and again, faith in that. Then do, or see what unfolds. So, so second one is intelligent wisdom that overcomes doubt. What else? Devotion. Okay, devotion. Devotion to what? 
devotion to the path. I feel like devotion is different than faith in, in terms of how I I live. Like you can have faith and believe in something, right? But devotion to the path, like to to do the practice is what will allow us to continue discovering that wisdom that will overcome the doubt if doubts arise. There are three kinds of faiths we talk in Buddhist traditions, Tibetan Buddhism, and uh, different uh, aspects of faith. Devotion I was talking about uh, involves this uh, humility and uh, uh, letting go of uh, oneself, ego, and uh, surrender. That's why guru yoga, in a, in a sense, use as a skillful means. In terms of guru business or guru, guru, we are not talking about as a person. Guru is a, what the guru represent. That's the one we have a devotion. You know, when we say the guru devotions, you know, that's the, the source stuff. of the old attainment. That's what said. Guru is the source. What that means? We are not devoting to the personality or guru as a person. We have a devotion to the what the guru represents oh. and also what the guru teaches, teaching unfold. Then if your world started to unfold and then resonate, then that's that. That's the benefit of that relationship, guru-disciple relationship, whatever. In then, the context of Vajrayana, if we view Guru inseparable from Vajra Yogini, you can get the extra benefit. You are unveiled, you are trying, you are really coming in to discover the Vajra Yogini in a secret level. That's who you are, this clear right nature level of consciousness, awareness, inseparable from great bliss. So for that, somebody, if you we can see outside of you in a sense that somebody who is holding up a mirror and that helps. Mm -hmm. Again, humility. We use that kind of uh, something in the West those uh, terminology create uh, lots of uh, different connotation from how I view. <laughs> in other words, we kind of, we want to, uh, we are tired of uh, living with this uh, ordinary self, this ego self the life after life. So this is a chance. We came to this point to finally let go, relax into this uh, as a permission to let go of this ego-centered ego self. We are talking about the four necessary causes to achieve the goal of this practice. So first one was a strong, unshakable, intelligent faith. Second one is this intelligent wisdom that overcome doubts. Then last two, this is a Vajrayana practice. What makes Vajrayana practice work? Because not only Vajrayogini practice, but what's important? Um, diligence, actually do the practice. Yeah, diligence, okay. <laughs> yeah, single pointedness, yeah, diligence, single pointedness, single focus. Actually, open-mindedly, single focusing. On this inner. So our concentration should be single pointed. Our mind should be like a fine, well trained horse that is powerful but easy to control and direct. Those of you who have been practicing in shamatha, that is meant for this practice. In Dharma, we attain the realization only by practicing with single pointed concentration. But this is only possible. This is possible only if we understand the instruction thoroughly based on this wisdom, which understand or overcome the doubt. That if you have a doubt, it's difficult to concentrate and trust. And also if you have a doubt or if you don't have a faith in the single idam, then always kind of going my mind goes oh more good things goody out there or oh, this great teacher came to town and go there and receive this practice and always going like and that doesn't work for this practice like a well committed couple once committed 
then we single point is to this. Open mind is to this. So that does not mean this is the best, not like that. But once you commit, that's how we receive the blessing of the lineage. Once we dive into the, this Yavispa lineage of this long tradition of Vajra Yogini. This is, might be the little uniqueness which Ramatsan Kappa presented. Ramatsan Kappa showed how all the essential practice of Tantra can be included within a single sadhana of a single deity, Vajra Yogini. In this. When it comes to Japonka, then he incorporated, for example, just I stated this Ramatsan Kappa's uh, approach to the sadhana, incorporate all essential meaning of Vajrayana practice into one sadhana. So integration of all our spiritual training into practice of one deity. That's why we don't need to go shop around here. And so we make a connection. We trust everything is there. And also all the master's commentary is support there, well documented. And so realization here. We know by reading those narratives, the story of the great masters, then we have a more uh, our conviction and faith increase. Because it works, it worked for them in the human body. Last one among four, we talked about three. Tantra, what makes Tantra powerful? So I, it's surprising. I thought this will, will come first. You know this one. We, you often hear about this. Um, Samaya, Samaya connection with the lineage and the vows. Okay, so Samaya, vows, commitment, we talked a little bit, got in touch with once we receive empowerment. The fourth one is, of course, related secrecy. We have to keep it secret. Not because this particular practice is supreme uh, than others, so don't want to show the neighbors, because I don't want the neighbor to uh, learn this special one. Not like that. <laughs> so practice in secret. Otherwise, this blessing we have received during the empowerment will be dissipate. That's how they explain, or the keep it personal, inside your heart. Heart to keep, keep it. You don't need to broadcast. I now receive this great practice I'm doing. You know, in our tradition, especially ear whisper lineage masters, these wandering yogi and yogini, even they don't show the Vajra and the bell, which symbolize the practice of Vajrayana. Whoever practice Vajrayana, this Idan practice, they have that but they kept it the secret. They pretended they're not doing anything, more like a Shantideva style, sleeping, eating, going to bathroom. <laughs> That's real practitioners. After they died, then we started to discover their uh, tantric implements and the tantric texts and all these things, secret stuff. Then, oh, this master has been practicing tantra. This we done practice the entire lifetime. I even didn't know. Then if this master exhibit the sign of a realization at the time of death, then all the <laughs> students bowed and it's too late. They didn't know. But that's the time to really show off. <laughs> can in whole. But in a lifetime, we don't need to show off. Because if you have a special thing, like a special jewel or something, you don't want to display, put on the table, and so that thief come and get it. Right? So that's uh, another thing. But again, this one, this po point, you know, in terms of our journey, uh, we know everybody gonna practice and uh, also receive empowerment. So I have a complete trust and I can share and also among yourself. These are called Vajra Shivering, Vajra brothers and sister. We can talk about it and we can share the doubt to clarify the doubt and so forth. Does that make sense? Those four qualities. I think uh, each of you have this devotion I was talking about, this emotional unfoldment, connection, 
and that allow this quiet place receptable receptable open like a open cup so that the, whatever uh, you know nectar comes you can receive so if that open cup like a closing then if you don't have that devotion and that's the kind of almost definitional devotion for me and uh, not uh, surrendering even these pure teaching doesn't uh, penetrate into your heart so if you feel some emotions or you know some kind of strong feeling then nurture that you know don't worry about it Thank you.